hypothesis testing, distribution-free tests, the Mann-Whitney U-test. If you have two sets of data which are not paired, then the Mann-Whitney U-test may be an appropriate test to use. In this table, we have two sets of data, data A and data B. Clearly, these are not paired because the number of data values for A is different to B. There's no value here. So if these were paired, there's nothing that pairs with the 7. So clearly this data is not paired. So if you see data like this, where the number of values is clearly different between the two variables here, then a Mann-Whitney U-test may be the way forward. You can also get data where the number of values for both of your sets of data is exactly the same. And then you might wonder, are these paired data values? Now what you find in most tables is that if these were paired data values, then you would have an additional row here, and you may have um, some labels for the pairs of data values here. For example, let's say you've got a number of students. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six students. That's student number one. That's student number two, three, four, five, and six. So these labels here are telling you that the data is in pairs. These labels don't have to be numbers. They could be letters. Um, uh, but they're highlighting that these values are paired together. In this example, we have the marks obtained by a small random sample of students. So you have the marks obtained for boys, and clearly from the table there are more boys than girls who took this particular test. We're going to use the 5% level of significance to test whether there is any difference between the scores for the boys and girls. The Mann-Whitney U-test is used to test for a difference in uh, population averages. So you could be testing for a difference in the population mean or in the population median. H0, these two samples are taken from identical populations. So if the data for the boys and the data for the girls, these samples, if they both came from the same population, then the population average would be the same. And if the population averages for the boys and girls are the same, then there's no difference between them. That's what H0 states. The alternative hypothesis, H1, states that the samples are not taken from identical populations. So if the two samples come from different populations, their population averages would be different. So the mean and the medians would be different. This is not enough for H1. We also need to state whether the two averages are either different, which is a two-tailed test, or one of the averages is greater than or less than the other, a one-tailed test. So we need one of these statements here. Either the two averages are different, two-tailed test, or one is greater than the other. Clearly from the uh, question here, we're looking for, is there a difference between the boys and the girls? So this is a two-tailed test. So we don't need this. OK, so H1, samples are not taken from identical populations. The two averages are different. The first step is to rank all of the data together in the table. So we're not treating boys and girls separately. So we're combining all of the data together and we're going to rank the whole lot. There are 16 data values. So I've written the numbers 1 to 16. Every time I use a rank, I'm going to cross it off from here. To rank the data, I'm going to take 
rank 1 as the smallest data value. So rank 1 goes here. Rank 2. Rank 3. And now there's a problem. We have uh, the same value, so we will end up with tied ranks. There's two values which are the same, which means we need to work out the average of ranks 10 and 11. So that's going to be 10 and a half, or 10.5. So 10.5, 10.5. I need a few more values here. There's uh, 18 data values in total. And that's not a problem. Yeah, if you're short of a few numbers here, you can always add on a few at the end there. There we go. So there are 18 data values, and I've used all 18 ranks. I've taken care of the tied ranks here as well. the total for the boys and the total for the girls. So if we add up the ranks, so ignore the original data, just keep your focus on the ranks. Add up the total, Okay, so add up all of the uh, ranks for the boys to work out their total. 109.5 and then do the same with the girls. 61.5. Calculate the U value for each of the samples. Here's the formula. It's given to you in the formula book, so you don't need to memorize this. The T is the total. The N is the sample size. So for the boys, the total T is 109.5. Then you've got minus a half times N. There are 11 data values for the boys. Times N plus 1, which is 12. And that gives you a U value for the boys of 43.5. You do something similar for the girls. That gives you a U value of 33.5. The smaller of these two values will become the test statistic, which is 33.5. Now we need to go to the tables. Critical values of the Man Whitney statistic. Table 11, page 33. There are two tables here, so determine whether you're doing a one-tail test at the 5% level or a two-tail test at the 10% level, that's this table here, or whether you're doing one of these, that's this table here. We're doing a two-tail test at the 5% significance level, so we're looking at this table. The M and the N represent the sample sizes of your two samples and our sample sizes are 11 and 7. So there's 11, there's 7, that gives a critical value of 17. Or you can do it the other way around, there's 7, and there's 11. Same value, 17. Okay, so the critical value is uh, 17. 
and using the same condition as before that if the test statistic is less than or equal to the critical value then you reject H0 only if this is true our test statistic is 33.5 the critical value is 17 clearly 33.5 is not less than or equal to 17 so we're going to accept H0 so our conclusion is accept H0 there is no significant evidence that there is a difference between the average scores for boys and girls